Hi everyone, it's Tanya and welcome to today's video. Today's video is an exciting one. I am so excited for this project because recently Jennifer Brooks and Tori from Hufflepuff's Discovery. They have announced a new readathon, which is called Asiansathon, and its main objective is to read books written prior to 1700s. I will link both of their announcement videos down below in the description box, so you can check them out. To, they will suggest you some interesting book recommendations for that you might be interested in reading, um, and they will explain all the prompts, timeline, and everything. But yeah, this video is going to be my TBR for the Asian Sathon. I thought it was so perfect and so interesting because I really do need to read more classics from like ancient times and from medieval times. I did read some ancient classics, but I don't think I've read medieval literature. I did read some like medieval philosophy when I was in university, but it has been so long time ago I have successfully forgotten <laughs> everything. And when it comes to fiction, I don't think I've read like anything from medieval fiction. Yeah, I definitely need to participate in this readathon and it's going to be an interesting experience. So this video is going to be my TPR for the Asian Saturn, which is going to happen in June. There are a few prompts, but the main condition for the books is to be written before the year 1700s. Some of my books on my TPR, they don't really fit any like specific prompt but they do fit this main condition to be written before the year 1700 so i think then they will qualify <laughs> for the readathon and uh, some other books i found specifically for the prompts so the first book actually is the one that doesn't really fit any specific prompt except for being written before 1700s and that is the tale of sinew it is a piece of ancient Egyptian literature. I think it's the oldest one that has survived. It was written approximately in 1875 BC. It's a little bit younger than the tale of Gilgamesh, but almost from the same time period. <laughs> and this work has been acclaimed as the supreme masterpiece of ancient Egyptian literature. The tale is considered to be written in verse, but there are also opinions that it might have been performed as well. There is also an ongoing debate between Egyptologists and people who study like ancient Egyptian literature whether the tale is based on real events or if it's a fictional account, with the majority of scholars believing that it's most probably a fictional account. The story is set in the aftermath of death of the pharaoh Amenemhat I who was the founder of the 12th dynasty of Egypt in the 20th century BC. The themes that the book explores include divine providence and mercy. Unfortunately, the author of the tale is unknown. However, he is declared to be Egyptian Shakespeare, because some of the ideas from the tale can be found even in biblical texts. So I have had my eye on this book for a long time. I actually was going to read it after I finished my Tale of Genji project. But since this readathon is happening, I was like, okay, this is the time to read it. And then I can just reread it when I get to. The Tale of Sinew from ancient Egyptian literature is going to be my first book for the ancient season. And then let's go to the prompts. So the first prompt, is to read a play. And for that, I've chosen this book, Aeschylus, the Persians and other plays. There is a few plays, as the title suggests, <laughs> in this edition. So we have the Persians, we have Seven Against Thebes, the Suppliants and Prometheus, Prometheus, in Russian it's Prometei, Bound. I, they're all quite short, so I think I will just choose, I think it's going to be Persians though, <laughs> but I will choose, like, may, maybe I will be able to read all of them, we will see, but I just also want to read, like, introductions and additional material, so, and I read quite slowly, as we all know. <laughs> the month of June I will be reading The Idiot with my book club, and then I need, which is also quite long, and then the group read for this readathon. Uh, is going to be Pilgrim's Progress, and that book is like 400 pages as well. So, you see, I have like quite a few chunky books on my TBR, so that's why I confess 
I confess, I've been searching for short books for this TBR. I, I tried to make this TBR as doable as possible. So that's why I do not give any promises that I'm going to read all of the plays in this book, but I think I will get to Persians at least. I like if I see the word Persians. I want to read it for obvious reasons. My husband is Iranian, so <laughs> if I see Persians, I'm like, yes, we are reading that. So yeah, I think I will read Persians from this collection of plays. And then the next prompt is read a book written by a woman. Actually, I thought that this would be difficult to find books for this prompt because obviously, like, you don't see a lot of female writers in, in those times, but then it suddenly hit me it hit me that I have this book and I still haven't read it <laughs> and it's short and it's perfect. This is the diary of Lady Murasaki, a court lady from ancient Japan, 11th century Japan. Lady Murasaki, she was a lady in court and she was also a tutor of of the young Empress Shoshi. This book is a series of vignettes vividly describing her life at court and describing court traditions and ceremonies. For example, there will be this auspicious ceremony of birth of a prince. There will be rivalries between the emperor's consorts with sharp criticism of Murasaki's fellow ladies-in-waiting and drunken courtiers and telling remarks about the timid empress and her powerful father. It is also said that the diary is a work of great subtlety and intense personal reflection as Murasaki makes penetrating insights into human psychology, her pragmatic observation always balanced by an exquisite and pensive melancholy. So it sounds very interesting and just great and also this edition has a very interesting introduction it has so much information on cultural background like general cultural background then it has language and style then it has poetry religious background architecture it even has pictures you see like pictures of the architecture of, of japan in those times even dress um women's titles and then some information about the author, the structure of the diary. Yeah, so it has basically a lot of additional information on the time period in Japan in that time and like cultural background and the diary itself. So very interesting and I'm super excited for this one. I think I will finally make it a priority. And then one more book for this prompt is because I just really want to give it a try is Sappho's poetry. This is an obvious choice for this prompt. I feel like the first book, the first author to whom your mind would naturally go for this prompt would be Sappho. I haven't read anything from Sappho, but when I was in university, my professor, he was teaching me ancient philosophy, ancient Greek philosophy. He was a big fan of Sappho, like he was talking about Sappho a lot whenever he could. Uh, but I, like, I never got around to reading her poetry. Well, obviously, most of her poetry is lost and we only have fragments and I think only two like full poems by her. Uh, but yeah, I've ordered this edition from Penguin and I'm so looking forward to giving Sappho a try. I am not a big fan of poetry. I don't really read poetry. I don't like even I don't I cannot say that I resonate with it like I, it just doesn't produce any impression on me but maybe it's because I haven't read much of poetry maybe I need to kind of get used to the genre and then I will appreciate it so yeah let's try let's start with the first poet <laughs> Sappho so yeah this is my two books for the prompt of female writers and then prompt number three is to read a book referenced in another piece of literature for that, very logically, I will read The Aeneid by Virgil, because it's also our body read in the big book, book club, and I think it's perfect. It's Aeneid. It has been referenced multiple times. <laughs> so I think Aeneid, Aeneid is going to be a perfect fit for that. I'm super excited. I'm currently reading The Odyssey. The Iliad, the Iliad has defeated me <laughs> currently. I will still finish it, but at this point I am defeated by the Iliad. The Odyssey is enjoyable, so I am reading the Odyssey currently, it's like our May budget read, and then the Aeneid is going to be June. So, 
excited. Then the next prompt is to read a piece of non-fiction. And I am also super excited about this one. Because again, I was like, you studied philosophy in the university, you have forgotten everything, shame on you. I decided to pay some homage to my philosophical education. <laughs> and I decided to read Plato's dialogues. I decided to read this collection, which is The Last Days of Socrates. Socrates obviously was a Greek philosopher from Athens. He was Plato's teacher. He is one of the founders of Western philosophy. However, he didn't leave any texts behind. Like, he practiced his philosophy in an oral form. He was asking questions. He was talking to people in the street. He was uh, starting debates and dialogues with people. So we mostly know about him through texts of his students, such as Plato, Plato being like the main source of information about Socrates, and Xenophon. So the book that I am reading is going to be by Plato, Plato's dialogue. Socrates was arrested and he was condemned to death for heresy. And this collection of dialogues includes four dialogues, four dialogues which kind of show Socrates in his last days of life. In the first dialogue there will be discussion on the topic of piety and what piety is, the nature of piety. Then in another dialogue Socrates will be talking about accusations that are set against him and he rebutes those accusations. In the dialogue Crito, Socrates counters all the arguments of his friends and students who were urging him to escape because there was an opportunity for him to run away. And in the last dialogue, Phaedo, we see Socrates preparing for his execution, being calm and confident. I remember we read Phaedo. I don't remember if we read Crito, though. But we definitely read Phaedo, and I like I forgot everything. So, yeah, I need to reread that. Yeah, I'm very excited for this one as well. Next book. I don't know, honestly, if it fits the prompt of read something myth or legend-based. I, I don't know. I don't know if it's like legend based. Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe not. So, but anyway, I just want to read Icelandic sagas. I've never read any Icelandic sagas. So, I want to give them a try. The first, the saga for this readathon that I want to read is Igils. Igils? Igils? Saga, which oldest fragments date back to 1240 AD. It's an Icelandic saga on the lives of the clan of Igil Skallagrimsen, who was an Icelandic farmer, a poet and also a viking. The saga spans years 850 till 1000 and traces the life of his family, from his grandfather to his, to his offspring. The main protagonist is a morally ambiguous figure. He is a poet who composes beautiful poems and lyrics, but at the same time he is capable of terrifying brutality. The saga recounts Egil's progress from youthful savagery to mature wisdom as he struggles to avenge his father's exile from Norway and to protect and uphold his honor. The saga is set to explore diverse to topics such as loyalty, power of poetry and relationships between two brothers who are in love with the same woman. And so the protagonist of the saga seems to be like a very human, just realistic character. And yeah, like I said, I just want to read some Icelandic northern sagas, as I haven't read any before. So yeah, I'm also very excited for this one as well. And then the last uh, book, which I don't know, I'm not sure if, I don't think that it, it, if it fits any prompts, I think it only fits the main condition of being written before <laughs> uh, the 1700s. I just really want to read it, because it seems also an important piece of literature. It's the life of Lazarillo de Tormes. It's a first picaresque satirical novel, and it's a Spanish novella, so it comes from Spanish literature. It was published in 1554 anonymously because of its anti-clerical content. And, like I said, it established the style of picaresque satirical novel. The novel was banned by Spanish Inquisition after it was published. However, it became so popular that it was copied and it was being translated into multiple languages around Europe. The book is said to have very vigorous 
writing style and it is said to be very realistic and with its realism it exposes human hypocrisy. We follow the main protagonist of the novella, who is the bastard son of a prostitute. His name is Lazarillo. He goes to work for a blind beggar who treats him badly, he beats him, he abuses him, but at the same time he teaches him some important and useful um, dirty tricks as it's said in the synopsis. The boy later finds himself different masters and he works for them. The book vividly portrays his adventures, his masters, his tasks that he performs for them and with that exposes the corrupt world of the Spanish society of that time. It is also said that all of the adventures are told from the perspective of Lazarillo, who recounts them with candor and humor, which, made, which makes the novel appealing and enjoyable to read. So I'm also super... I, like when I read the synopsis, even though I didn't know for which prompt <laughs> I could feed it, um, I, I, re I really wanted to give it a try and really wanted to read it. So yeah, this is one more short novella from Spain, which I want to read for this readathon. And there you have it, guys, all the books that I hope to read for the Ancient Sathon in June. Super excited for this project. I am very much looking forward to it. I've already like gotten the books that I didn't have and I'm looking forward to receiving them. And they're so beautiful, all of them. So I'm very much looking forward to the to June. And yeah, that's it. I let me know in the comments if you are going to participate in this readathon, if you want to get more information. So Jennifer's and Tori's announcement videos will be down below in the description box so you can check them out. Uh, and yeah, if you're participating, let me know what books did you choose for your TBR. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're excited. I hope you're going to participate. And I'm very much looking forward to this readathon. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Have a good day. I will see you soon in my next videos. Thank you very much. Bye.